Hey guys, how you doing? This is Coffee Chug and we are here for class number two of robotic pumpkins and where we'll be carving our snapping jaw jack-o-lanterns. So I wanted to take a look into what it is we're going to be doing um, in class tonight so you can understand those that aren't participating basically what you're missing out on. So, things, yeah. We're going to do digital pen and see. Oh, look at that. Oh, my eyes hurt from looking at the lights. Blinded by the light. So here's where we're going to be starting. We are going to be starting with a quick demo. So the kids are going to come over with just their Arduino and their servo motor. And we're going to spend some time taking a look at how the servo motor works, what it is, how the wires work. We're going to take a look, remind ourselves of the potentiometer. We're going to take a look at the Arduino and just basically have a very quick tutorial lesson. And so this is nice. We separate, we get away from the computers, we get away from the kit that has all sorts of components. And we just have a quick, quick drill down. Five to 10 minutes explaining the basics to give them some base foundation. And you can see this is what we're doing right here. We're going to quickly review from class one where we're teaching how to turn on an LED, the blinking LED lights and how to make that work. We're gonna get into then talking about the servo, and then I'm gonna cut them loose with a quick little coding challenge, and then getting them exploring the servo, and then trying to think about their pumpkins that we're gonna get into in weeks three and four. And so then over here, these are the challenges for the week. Can you, and we're gonna start with this one right here. Can you program an LED light on pin 12? So just a basic review of the LED coding program that we did last week, but this time moving from pin 13, which is always on an Arduino, and converting it to pin 12 is just a little bit of a challenge. Then we're gonna get into the servo motor and try to see if they can actually get it to program from zero to 90 degrees, and so we'll explain why that's a challenge. And then finally, getting them to think, can they get the servo and two LED lights to be on at the same time? Which is what they're gonna need for their pumpkin in the next two classes. And so, over here, what we have is a menu of options. And so we can't just leave them hanging. And so there's some sample code from last week, the basic blinking LED just to refresh their brain. There's some more advanced code from the look at in terms of how do you get two buttons turned on. Here is just one button, but now we have a pull-up resistor. If we look at this one, as you can see in the video tutorial that we created, a pull-up resistor that keeps the current stable because we're running into not having that. The light will still stay on. Looking at the potentiometer, which I don't currently have right now because I have it converted over to the servo, and then looking at multiple LEDs. And so some kids got to this last week, not all, but they're there as a refresher for them to explore and kind of dive into. Not just a copycat, because that's why we're getting into over here with those challenges that we talked about previously. Over here, just really, really simple, simple, straightforward code because they need to understand how the communication language works. And so this is just real simple, how to communicate to the server. We're gonna talk about what is a library, what are cases and all that good jazz. And then here, this is moving into the potentiometer um, because they're gonna need some help with that, especially with the map code here, how we do scaling and converting. But from there, that's just to help them understand the code. And this is where the challenge comes in. And this is where the thinking is. Then they have to explore. There is no answer key. Can they use the numbers and manipulate to get the servo only go 90 degrees? And then can they use their previous knowledge from last week to get the servo moving with LEDs? And so just like anything in class, in school, in learning, we gotta pique their interest. They're gonna have other questions and we're gonna let them go there. But we have to give them some guidance, we have to give them from reference points and we have to give them parameters and that's what this class does. We're gonna give them parameters right here. We're gonna rehash, we're gonna give them just quick of what a servo is, give them some baseline knowledge and then we're moving over here to set them free. We got some support documents and more importantly, their stations to just get after it, get hog wild and get it figured out because then next week we move into the pumpkin. Now the exciting thing is when we did this with the adult class, we started talking about using tilt switches, having LED light up as the jaw starts to open, more LEDs open up in the mouth. We started talking about using the photoresistors so the lights turn on when it gets dark, using sound effects and the buzzer. The sky is the limit with this project. We're just laying down the groundwork. We're peaking interest, we're peaking curiosity, and once again, we're being that one degree of separation, giving them the space 
to trust in themselves, to trust in their creativity, and to begin to tinker, experiment, and prototype because that's how we learn. Not listening, not just copying instructions, but hands-on immersive learning, constantly asking, what if I do this? All right, guys, this is 212 STEAM Labs, class number two of Robotic Halloween, the one degree of separation. Stay tuned.